All right, guys, so this is Rock River Rails. It is Tuesday, June 7th. I'm here in Janesville, Wisconsin, and we are catching an outbound. And now we're gonna go and uh, try to get ahead of this thing. So hopefully see you soon with some more footage. All right guys, so here we are going uh, northbound on Highway 51 in Janesville. Uh, we are headed to Milton, Wisconsin to try to get ahead of this Wisconsin Southern train tonight. Uh, it's currently about 7.30. Um, I just pulled into Janesville there and that last train snuck up on me so I wasn't quite prepared uh, with the tripod so I got what I could um, and hopefully we can get that set up um, and ahead of this train here so get a red light uh, we are intersecting now with uh, highway 14 in Janesville and we'll be in Milton in about five minutes or less so it's about 55 miles an hour up uh, Highway 51 North here, so I'm hoping we beat that train uh, through Janesville. But uh, we'll check back in with you here in a few moments. All right, guys. So we are here now at uh, Milton Propane. I think this should be far enough ahead of this thing to where we can get some decent footage of it. I'm thinking we have plenty of time here to get set up now, but uh, don't want to have it sneak up uh, on us again, so see what we can get. All right, guys, this is Rock River Rails checking back in with you. Again, I'm here in Milton, Wisconsin at Milton Propane. Hopefully far enough ahead of this thing where we didn't miss it, but uh, I highly doubt it since we were going about 60 down Highway 51 to get here. So, uh... Now we wait and see. Track for 1335-1335 on the Madison subdivision. Date is 0607-2022-0607-2022 to the WMX-1625. WMX 605, WMX 605, at Anderson. Check them out for 4, FLUR. Work with female plus 102.3. MP 102.3. Check them out 16 and 16 and the back 65,000, 165. Check them out 22, 22, a total of 3, CHRE. Boxes are checked. Four FOUR sixteen one six twenty two two two. All right, guys. So again, I'm here in Milton, Wisconsin. We're at mile post one oh six. Point zero six here on East Vincent Street. I think that last transmission was uh, our train that we've been waiting on. I really hope so because we're uh, starting to lose a lot of daylight here. It's currently about 8.30 p.m. All right, guys, so this thing is taking its time. Um, just heard some more horn. 
Looks like we should get it here in just a moment. Uh, I know I've been saying that quite a bit, but uh, I think it's finally going to make an appearance here. All right, so there's our gates. It is showtime. Looks like it's just a power move now. guys so this is rock river rails checking in for the last time uh so that was pretty cool tonight um brief summary there pulled into janesville uh the engine terminal area about seven o'clock or a little after uh, approximately um i went straight to arch street when i saw the yard was pretty dead um got over there didn't see any locos, um, no movement really either. Um, so again, I thought that was pretty dead. I thought we were gonna have a strikeout tonight. So then at that point, uh, I moved over to my spot, uh, my usual spot by the tracks. Uh, as soon as I pulled into the parking lot, I heard gates um, and bells coming out of the, uh, the engine terminal uh, just to the west. Uh, so I knew something was coming. I wasn't sure if it was gonna, you know, proceed on the tracks or uh, come out and switch back into the yard there. Um, as you can see from the video, it did come out. Uh, I barely got my camera set up and uh, on the tripod. Um, it might have been a little unlevel. Um, I did the best I could. I didn't even extend all the tripod legs. I got uh, the first three out. Um, so I was pretty much crouched on the ground shooting that train in Janesville. Uh, but it looks like, uh, from what I can tell, just taking a look at the footage uh, quick on the camera, uh, it looks pretty level. So, um, you know, I'll take what I can get there. Um, it was about to the point where that thing was coming up on me there, where I was just going to shoot a video on my cell phone, which is, you know, what I used to do when my channel first started out. Um, no big deal um, you know some footage whether it's on a phone or a camera is better than no footage so uh, luckily I got the Canon uh, on the tripod I did the best I could there and then I sat and waited for about an hour there in Milton um, looks like they cut off the, the cars there in Milton a little further down the line or possibly Janesville um, there's like a rock quarry yard back there in Janesville um, where I used to actually lose track of the trains um, and then they would continue north 
Uh, so I don't know if he cut off the cars and left them there. Um, but yeah, as you can see from the video, it uh, looked like it just turned into a light power move. Um, probably were, uh, those guys were probably going to tie those two units down in Milton for the night, but I uh, can't be sure. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, I got to see a WSOR signal as well. Um, I didn't even realize that signal was there behind me the whole time. Um, like I said earlier, I think that was my first time uh, at that location. So I threw some, uh, some dropped pins and saved them on Google Maps as a reference to try to get ahead of these things. And um, tonight was our first successful uh, chase of a WSOR train. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we're on our way back to Beloit now. Um, we're going south down Highway 51 here. Um, and hopefully we'll be back soon because it's getting kind of late. It's uh, about 10 after 9 right now on Tuesday, uh, June 7th. So yeah, guys, so that was pretty cool. Uh, weather was perfect. Um, it was about 70 degrees when that power move came through. So no wind. Um, lots of problems with that road video, Mike. I'm going to keep it as a backup. But fingers crossed, this Canon DM-100 uh, plugs directly into the back of my Canon camcorder. Uh, fingers crossed that thing performs, because uh, I'm pretty frustrated with the Rode video mic, to be honest. Um, and I've even gone as far as I wrapped the uh, audio cord for the mic. I wrapped it in tin foil and electrical tape to try to like solve that issue. Um, saw some guys talking in a few videos online about uh, the same problem and that uh, putting aluminum foil around the coiled part of the microphone audio cable solved their issue um, but it does not uh, for me um, some of my clips and uh, scenes they um, some of my clips and scenes they'll have the electronic feedback and some won't so I just cannot pinpoint it um, this weekend, June 11th, uh, on Saturday, is our first big travel day. Uh, we're going to be headed to Franklin Park for Franklin Park Railroad Days, 10 a.m. to 3. Um, and I just couldn't afford to go in there, uh, shoot a bunch of cool stuff all day. They're supposed to have some heritage units. Um, they usually do some high-speed passes with some metro trains towards the end. So um, I just couldn't afford to have my footage ruined again. Uh, by that electronic feedback from the road video mic. Um, that's the cam, or excuse me, that's the mic that plugs uh, directly into the side of my camcorder's uh, microphone uh, jack. It's a 3.5 millimeter. Um, I just don't get it. The electronic sound is, is sometimes there, sometimes not. So my Canon mic uh, is arriving this Thursday, the 9th. Um, Gonna probably try to take it for a test drive uh, Thursday or Friday night in Rochelle because I know for a fact um, I get that feedback in Rochelle. I don't know what it is. Um, it's either coming off the trains or if it's the signals or the Wi Fi there or Bluetooth off my phone. Um, I've tried everything turning my Bluetooth off, turning my Wi Fi off. Um, like I said, putting aluminum foil around the cord. Um, having my buddy turn his scanner off when he's near me. In a quarter uh, mile, turn right onto I West Centerway. I just don't get it. So, all right guys, so the GPS is telling me that I need to make a turn here. We're gonna cut it and uh, we'll talk to you later.